I'm glad I'm not the firstborn in my family. <laughs> God knows where I'd be now. Um, <clears throat> and I, I do have some notes I'm going to follow a bit. As I mentioned to a couple other folks, I was at uh, the Cuban boy band last night at Cook County that didn't start till 10.30 um, <laughs> with, with, with my notes. And I'm just looking at them this morning to see what I'd written. And it was like, oh, maybe not. <laughs> kind of <in> that. <clears throat> Somehow I got more focused on the band than on the writing. <laughs> and I won't tell you why. You can guess that part. <laughs> so anyway, a pleasure to be here. I'm delighted. Um, uh, the topic uh, it was mentioned was humility. It's made me think hard and long. I'm not sure I have many ideas on it, but we'll see where we go um, I, with that as, as such. I, I think, though, that um, just as a, a, a preface, that, that uh, I, I would say that one of the things that, that I found intriguing uh, for myself was that it, because I've been involved in, in uh, city politics, it's easy to get caught in that what did you do kind of thing in that I was elected at city council, a member of city council, blah, 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 kind of thing in that. And it's made me step back, not only for this, but for a couple other things and say, so what really matters? You can be elected to something and is that really all that significant as opposed to what did you actually do? What things happened that made a difference kind of thing? And that's where I'm going to try to, to spend a little of my time and, and to move to. And I'm not sure I, I, whether I have to hit here to, to get the next slide. Uh, the right arrow button. Okay. So I've kind of paired the, 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 the thinking about what, what humi humility might mean and, and, and the notion of uh, what really matters in that. And, and, and it, it is in, and will be a bit of a, a personal journey. Um, and it, it, I've reflected a bit on uh, what I have here in, right in, in front of you. Uh, Toni Morrison is probably one of the best known U.S. Um, authors, novelists, uh, playwrights, poetry, won most every award that, that, you can, uh, that you can possibly get as a writer. Uh, and this is a quote from her in just the last few days about her brand new book that she's just come out with. Uh, and the book is called God Help the Child. But the quote is, me, 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 me. A bit of the me generation notion. Look at my picture. Look at my novel. I write about myself. Look at my story. It's about yourself. She's talking about herself. It's about myself. So it is a little bit about the journey and a little bit about my story and trying to reflect where humility comes into that. And for me, part of that is the notion of, of what does it really mean? What, what did you do that matters? Um, and, and there's a variety of, of, of ways of, of thinking about that. Um, I, and I think that, that, that as part of, of, of uh, the, the journey and part of my thinking about it is the sense of modesty. Um, which oftentimes doesn't come to politicians very carefully, very easily, kind of thing like that. But the notion of, of things that, that, that maybe you are doing or you are trying to do are very modest in them. And so the first one I want to talk about is, is in the last couple of years, uh, what, what uh, I think uh, has been something that I would describe as something that has mattered in a small kind of way and is a fairly modest effort. And, and I'm just showing a, a couple of... Um, pictures that relate to um, what I want to, to go into a bit. Um, in the last few years, uh, we've managed to, a number of us, put together a very informal kind of group um, that, that doesn't exist as a real group as such, uh, but have looked particularly at the small park that, that, or parkette that's right behind where Sobeys used to be off of 104th Street, um, and to see what could be done to bring that back to life. And in one sense, it's a very modest little effort. Um, it's a small little tiny park. 
that's been neglected for over 30 years. Um, actually, the city owns it. I'm familiar with it. And the city never did anything for 30 years uh, about it. Um, I, it was, it was uh, filled with dead trees and debris and all of that kind of thing that's there. And so uh, with a, a fairly significant effort, and, and a group of people that, that, um, that got together, we looked at what it is we thought could make a difference and that what would matter. And in that journey, we were able to pull together individuals that, that were willing to take some lead. Amanda Tse, um, who some of you may know, has been very active and, and she's really the person that's coordinated the Illuminate project that we've done. But we've also been able to do that in, in a way that has pulled in a lot of other groups, uh, other people. So the 104th Street Action Committee is part of it. The Community League has always covered the insurance we need to have for doing the, our Illuminate Festival. Um, the the uh, University of Alberta, the, the Faculty of Extension and City Region Study Center have handled our money. So if we've got some money and had to pay bills, they've handled taking care of, of, of that particular aspect. Uh, Justin Archer and his group have done PR for us. Um, at very little cost, kind of thing in that, in order to, to provide the information that we want to have. Uh, we've also been able to use Guru, who has a different name now, I can't remember what it is exactly, over on 104th Street as well, um, Media the College. They, they came on board the first Illuminate that we did. We managed to find a little money to help them use their, their equipment to do um, uh, stuff on the wall, uh, uh, different graphics, et cetera, and that. And ever since then, Owen has been not been able to say no. And so we've done a lot of other things with us in this effort um, for no cost, because it's hard for him to say no in that. And, and we work as this, this very informal group. As I said, we don't exist except in our own heads. We get together every year and do a festival, pulling all these pieces together. And in the end, what, what, I, what you saw before was one of the installations. We have about 12 installations that, that emphasize light. Um, they're there for a couple of days and nights. They look better at night than during the daytime because they have light. Um, and these are, are, are mason jars that have um, yeah, a light, um, one of the little things, you, uh, uh, LED light in, in the bottom, and are hung in such a way that, that when they move, they give you this kind of effect. Very modest. Who would guess with, the, with mason jars what you could do? Not me, I haven't a clue, nor would I ever be able to do anything like this. But it's the result of that informal working and thinking together, gathering people who, who are prepared to do something that is really very modest. Um, the, the other one is light coils that were wrapped around tree trunks and that lit up in the evening, and then had a couple other poles. And look how simple that is, and how modest it is. And think about the fact that what we were able to do in a small little park is have about 12 different installations, all modest, all by volunteers, um, different groups of individuals that, that um, got together and, and did that. And all the different entities that came together, of which I was part of, um, uh, to make it work and to make it happen. And what we saw was people walking through the park, particularly in the evening at night when it was dark, who would stand and look at and talk about the different things that they saw. And we're spending time engaging each other and look at that and, and, and looking at some of the components and say, those are just jars. How did they manage to think about and do that? All of that, I think, is part of the very modest kinds of way that one can do things that, that in fact, in one sense, I think, tend to make a difference. Um, part of it what drove many of us, including myself, is that in being engaged in the city of Edmonton and trying to do things that make a difference, sometimes um, I, uh, we talk about things like the, the new arena, which is, is great, but it's hard to know how can I be part of that, where this little park and the stuff that we do there offered a huge array that many people could find ways to do something that made a small difference just for a couple days a year, a couple of evenings, um, and we've done it three years in a row, kind of thing. And we do it on very little money, and we do it as a non-entity. We, we don't exist except a group. I forgot to mention that we also get some support from Divine Wines that some of you probably know. We give artists 
the groups would put something, we give them a bottle of wine that, 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 that um, uh, Divine contributes along with some other things. So it's using all of those kind of resources. And I think that's one way from my perspective to think about humility uh, a bit, about being modest. Most of you in this room wouldn't know anyone that was involved in doing this and how it was organized or that I was involved or any of the other people that were involved. These were a lot of folks. And, that, and it's understanding that what is significant and what in fact was important is what happened at the end, that all of it came together. People talked with each other. They saw that park in a different way than they'd ever seen it before. And it began to open people's thinking about what it meant. A very modest little effort that, and very small, uh, nothing that was entirely earth shattering. Although some of the pieces that were, were presented, like I've, I've shown you, were, were quite outstanding. And certainly much beyond anything that I would do. I haven't got an artistic bone in my body. In that. Um, as I said, I can go listen to the boys' bands, but I can't do any of it, um, <laughs> even though I wish I could. Um, so so that, that is, is one aspect that I think, that I think is, is significant. And I, I think it is because of how you can be part of something that in fact is something else for everybody in that and, and really leads people to rethinking, relooking, and, that, and, you're, and, and who did it is not, not significant for, for the for people that come and enjoy it. The, 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 um, the other area, so that's a, that's a, um, sorry, that's a Luminite, um, and that's our little project in there. The, the other one I wanted to, uh, to talk about a little bit um, is I actually do officially have a part-time job as, as an executive director of the North Saskatchewan River Valley Conservation Society. We'll say about, more about that in, in coming up. Um, this is a, a, another effort that, that um, most of you probably are, including myself at the time, were unaware of. Um, and and it, it includes an area of the city that's in the very southwest corner of the city. And I'm talking about where, where it's bordered by the county of Parkland and the, the, uh, the, the county of um, Leduc. So way at that, that very far southwest corner. Um, and among other aspects, is we're, we're looking at how that can be preserved along the river valley. And that nearly 500 hectares of, of natural land that are there. And as part of it, there's also an old 1908 post office. Before any of you were born in this room, even though we talked about age earlier, and that none of you were old enough when this was, was, was built in that and, and, and used as a post office. Um, the, the, this little group, um, uh, the North Saskatchewan River Valley Conservation Society I mentioned about, which you know, sounds very grand grandiose, been around about six, seven years, six or seven years. I'm the only staff person they've ever had kind of thing, and I'm cheap in that. And we just got some money a few months ago so, to make that happen. So just to give you a sense of, again, it's, it's a modest group of people, a number who live in this general area, but also other people around the city and what we are looking at is what matters with this land. What would make a difference for, for, um, for everyone? And it is that sense of we're trying to do some things that will help preserve that land for everyone else for generations to come, for the next seven generations. And that, and that, that is a, a goal that is significant, but the people who are working on it and all the different entities are not very important. It, it's what we're trying to achieve. And it's a very modest kind of thing. Um, as I said, most of you probably don't even know that it's there. I didn't know it was there before either um, until I got involved as well. So I think in some things, in my mind, besides the notion of modest, that, that I, I think that humility and, and what matters also includes a couple of things, that a fair and just society. And to not be overly political at the moment, um, I think one of the things that has resonated when we talk about a fair and just society is the notion that maybe we all got to help with making sure that, that economically we do well, except business and industry, I think that's hit people in a way of like, how come they're exempt when you think about the notion of a fair and just society? I think it's also important to look at how it enriches the lives of individuals. 
I think the little parquet and the illuminate enriches the lives of people who come and take a look, just as I think this area does that as well. And that that's part of thinking about things in a, in a humble way. It's not about me. Uh, it's not about some of the other people. Divine Wines would never claim that they were significant in what's happening in, in that, that park uh, as, as such. Neither would Justin Archer say that that's, you know, one of his big items and the rest. But what it does say is, is that the people who come there find it a, to look at it in a different way. And that's a part of what we're hoping to achieve there. I think the other part of it is <clears throat> that knowing that what you are doing, what I am doing, I like to think that I'm doing, is, an, is making communities resilient and strong. And Edmonton is a city of many different communities, and, that, and I think there is something about that, that that we need to be part of, finding ways to help make communities resilient and strong. And again, it's a very modest goal. Um, um, in my own community, I live in Oliver, and that I'm part of the group working on getting a bike route on 102nd Avenue. Will that change the world? No, kind of thing in that. It's the biggest thing in sliced bread. Uh -uh, it's not an LRT system, you know, kind of thing in that, or anything like that. But it's something that the community has embraced and, and we're, we're part of. Most of you will, if you use, ever use it, because it is going to be there starting next year, um, we'll have no idea how that happened or who did it or whatever. And that's part of the, the modest part, I think, part of the humility, and that is knowing that, that you're working on something that matters. And, and it's, as a former politician, it's not that I was elected. It was really, it took me a while to realize what was really significant is, is am I doing anything that matters, that makes a difference, that we're looking at. And so to kind of pull together and that, um, another uh, quote that I like, and, and this is for an American poet who died in, in 1995, but wrote most of his poetry between um, the 60s, 70s, and, and into the 80s, and, and was one of the best uh, known U.S. Uh, uh, poets. And, and, he, and he, his comment in one of his poems, and this was towards the end of his life, if I'm a host at last, it is of little more than my own past. May others be at home in it. And I think that speaks to me what humility is about. That in the end, that others be at home in it. And I, I, I want to, to end This is again back at, at the, the lands we're looking at. This is a sand dune uh, that is covered with summer vegetation, and you see the post office back there in, in the distance. I chose this because for me, it's absolutely gorgeous. And I think we don't realize the value of beauty, and I think that's part of our understanding of what humility and modesty is, the beauty in the world that we live in, and how we can make something of that. I'm always taken by this particular photo because it, it shows beauty in a way that I could never, and I think most of us could never replicate, kind of thing like that, but can do something so that every generation is able to enjoy and to see something along those lines. So it's a complex issue of humility. I'm not sure I understand it entirely by any means, but I think if you start to think about what matters, not necessarily his position or whatever, and, and what you're trying to achieve and how that makes us a better world for all of us, and our community stronger, I think you're on your way. And, and I hope that I'm on my way. And that it, it's been an interesting journey. I hope to have a few more years of this journey. Um, I stay away from the boys' bands <laughs> at late at night and keep my head a little clearer kind of thing in that. Um, and that's it. And I'm happy to answer any questions or any comments anybody has. But that's my sense of humility and what matters. Thank you.